Good morning, Spark fans and other data fans. So there's a reason I'm looking really tired this morning. It is conference season, and currently you've got Microsoft Ignite going on. And there's a whole load of announcements coming out, so I'll do a quick video talking through the major feature announcements, what it means to us in the Azure data platform world, and kind of go from there. If you don't have time for that, and you don't want to listen to me for 10 minutes, which I do not blame you, quick 30 second peek. Power BI now has per user premium capacity, which is awesome. There's been loads of features that are premium only that you can't get unless you pay for a big load of dedicated capacity. There's a load of that coming per user soon, which is awesome. Power BI and Synapse are going to start working together really, really nicely. So Power BI on Synapse realize that you are piling onto a certain areas that aren't optimized. It'll create some materialized views to make those queries faster. So it's going to do kind of learning optimization as it goes. How messy that'll get, how many trails of littered material I've used at least in its wake, we don't know, but super interesting idea and super interesting tech. Databricks has a load of announcements in Azure. So the Photon Engine, which is the big rebuild of the entire Spark code base from Java into C++, is now in private preview. So there is a copy of the engine you can go and use today if you can get onto that private preview. And that is big, 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 big news. Okay, so that is the main headlines from my point of view, but let's go and have a look through the announcements and talk about what that actually means to us. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this video is useful to you and leave it a comment. Let us know what you think is useful and the things we've missed that you went, ooh, actually, that's more important than you think. Let us know in the comments. All right. So as usual, we have a book of news, which is a really good habit that Microsoft have gotten into. So the last few major conferences that we've had, when we've had things like Inspire and Build and that kind of thing, they've put out a book of news so we can go and say, what are all the announcements? Can I just go and see all of the announcements in one place, please? We now have it in this thing. So I'll drop a link to this, but just Google Ignite book of news and you can go straight to it. So there's loads of stuff in there. You're gonna see how all the main announcements, what they actually are. Now this doesn't have everything. There's one or two I've noticed not in here, but this has most things that we actually care about. Okay, so let's just quickly whip through and see what we're talking about. Okay, so a few bits and pieces. So cognitive search, super, super useful, kind of for doing uh, indexing of text. So if you're loading loads and loads and loads of documents into a lake and you wanna say, hey, can we just do some term extraction and translate it all into a set language and do a little bit of sentiment analysis, anything that uses some of those cognitive services as a search indexer, you can use via cognitive search, which is really, really cool. However, if any of your architecture was actually secure, you couldn't use this stuff. So it's very much a, if you have an open public uh, lake and you put some stuff in there, great. If you need it in VMs behind security barriers with private endpoints, you couldn't use a load of this stuff. So they've enabled that for cognitive services or cognitive search, which means we can use it in production grade secure environments, which is awesome. And again, that's a big story we're seeing across a lot of the things in Azure currently. They're enabling these private endpoints. They're using private link to get to the um, access panels. And it's great. It's slowly getting to the point when everything fits into this secure environment, which makes my life so much easier. Okay, there's a load of new um, kind of services. I've not gone through the detail of this, but a load of things around the decisions, the metrics advisor digging into things and giving you advice is really, really cool. Um, I have not looked enough into it. Uh, the one thing I've looked at is spatial analysis is really, really cool. So being able to actually use that kind of live feed and say, there's a lot of people there. There's a flow going there. How busy is that path versus that path? Kind of starting to do that kind of thing, which is what people have been using computer vision for for a little while. And again, trying to democratize that as a service is awesome. Again, oh, anyway. now this is an interesting one. I had a heart attack earlier this week with Azure Machine Learning Services because I got this email. So the Azure Machine Learning Enterprise Edition will retire and there was a collective groan that when this email went out going, oh, not again. Oh no, just tell me you're not putting ML services away again. And then if you read the email, no, they're not. They're taking a load of the features that are in Enterprise Edition saying, actually, all of this is now available in basic now. We're not gonna have basic and enterprise. It's just basic and it has all of the features. So it's good news. It's really, really good news, but it came off in an email saying it, we're going to retire this service, which just made so many people panic, uh, but that's not happening, so do not worry. Okay, so a load of things in there, a load of updates to the designer, a load of updates to um, what it's doing in terms of labeling. There's an auto-labeler that's kind of going in that adds a load of features. Again, take a look at the announcement. 
One of the big ones for me is this. So there's an integration with ML Flow, and it's been that's been like a little war path going on for a little while. Do you go the Databricks uh, backed ML Flow for doing your model experimentation, or do you go ML Services and bake it into the Azure world? And both have their pros and cons. And the fact that it looks like um, machine learning services now supports ML Flow and the ML Flow libraries to interact with it is great. So that just means, you know what, we're not fighting over which standard we use. We can just all use a certain standard. And then where you keep your experimentation, that's up to you. It depends if you use one service or another. But the fact that we're starting to standardize is awesome. OK, and then there's some stuff about bots and cache and Redis. I want to skip over those. There's the Azure uh, Cosmos DB serverless option, which is very, very cool. So consumption based rather than paying for all use current uh, constantly, you just say, just charge me as I use it, which again makes things super, super cheap. If you're having sporadic ad hoc bursts of activity, you can allow it to tailor to your workloads a lot, lot more effectively. My stuff I don't want to go into, you can skip over that. Um, that's what I mentioned. So Power BI analyzing usage within Synapse and then deciding to create materialized views. Now that is crazy. That is really, really cool. And there's loads of stuff in there uh, and I'll I'll be looking at that soon and we can see what we can do with those materials views, what happens if you change it and how do we manage that. So I'm looking forward to digging into that. That should be good. And again, this is the one with the Photon Engine. So there's actually quite a few different Databricks announcements that were all baked in here. So main thing, Spark is based on JVMs, based on Java. So all of your workers, they're sitting inside a Java virtual machine. And so historically, a load of stuff's been slow. If you try and use a Python UDF, you try and bring in a library that's just plain Python, not PySpark, try and use um, an R uh, user defined function, they're not going to go very fast because these languages don't compile natively down to Java. So it has to kind of go outside of that JVM, do some processing, bring it back, and it's just always that constant interop between what's inside the JVM, what's outside the JVM. Um, and so that's one major thing that switching over to a C based engine, it just enables a load of stuff. But that's not why they did it. So they did it because they've got this crazy vectorization of how they do compute. So I've got one value and I send it to my CPU and it does the compute and it's sending that value back and just repeat however many, many million times. And the thing that's gone into Photon, which is crazy, is the actually we're going to bundle up a little package of four, eight values, send that to the CPU, compute all of them and get it back, which just means we can go so much faster. So they've actually really, really, really optimized how they're working with the CPU. There's a real low level detail about how that Spark engine is now working. And it's essentially just, we've still got the data frame API and the way that we work with Spark, doubt the entire engine underneath it and put in this new C++ based one, which is crazy cool. So the big announcement there is that it's now in private preview. So if you can get onto the preview, it's available in Azure. And that's sooner than I expected. I wasn't expecting it for a good few months yet. And that means we're slowly creeping towards the point that it'll be available to use in production, which is going to have all sorts of speed boost kind of effects. So big, big news on the Databricks side. Now, when that was announced, there's a whole load of questions going, when can I use it in Synapse? When can I use it in my own Kubernetes backed Spark cluster? The answer is we don't know. So this is a Databricks invention. It's a Databricks engine. It is entirely proprietary to Databricks. But we don't even know if Databricks are planning on open sourcing it. Will it go into the current open source Apache Spark project? Or is this an entirely new thing that is just for Databricks? And that is not currently known. So best assumption at the moment, this is a Databricks only feature. So suddenly that comparison between Databricks Spark versus Synapse versus HD Insight versus other versions of Spark, um, Databricks is just going to be going, oh, we're that much faster because they've got this Photon Engine in there. Other Databricks things that were around, so we've got things like, so there's a roadmap that's been shared, which is great. Uh, and that's got things like spot VMs. So if you want Databricks to run on some really, really cheap VMs that they may go down occasionally, they may kind of just blip, come back up. Your jobs won't be interrupted in that case, but they just, they'll just they take a little longer to run. So if you've got kind of low, um, low priority jobs, maintenance jobs that you're doing in the background, a gigantic optimize that you just want to run and you want it to be cheap, then you can run it on these spot VMs. And that's going to be, to change some of the patterns about how we do things like maintenance. So Spot VMs coming is really, really, really cool. Uh, there's a lot of security stuff. Um, so plugging it in, turning off private uh, public IP addresses for your clusters, uh, to, uh, things for private link. 
So a private link in Azure is where if you wanted that Databricks workspace to actually not be publicly accessible. Uh, so you can currently tie down your clusters, so your clusters are within your network, but you still log in to the Databricks public uh, website to go and play with your clusters. Now saying actually that workspace is going to be behind private link, and we're going to tie that down as well. So there's lots and lots of stuff coming for Databricks down the line in Azure. Now, as to how those things are looking for Databricks roadmap outside of Azure, I have no idea. I just have this to go on, which is all about the Ignite announcements. So lots of cool stuff, really, really kind of uh, interesting things that are happening. Uh, I'll drop some of these links in there as well. So you've got the whole thing talking about the Photon Engine. Uh, it's kind of rehashing some of the announcements that were made back in the Spark and AI Summit. Uh, but you get that kind of thing, you know. So they're saying there's a 20%, well, sorry, 20 times um, performance gain over traditional Spark using it with Photon. Uh, digging into some of those details, it looked like they were also using slightly fancier hardware and kit and some other optimizations to get there. But even so, just that Spark 3 to Photon is a huge leap. So again, loads and loads of really good stuff we're expecting there. That's really good. And again, Power BI announcements, there's a whole raft of them. Uh, there's a lot more in there than just the things we're talking about. Again, so you've got that premium um, per user and that kind of uh, signups analytics. So I'll drop all these links in there and you guys can go and have a look at that and see what you think. And yeah, interesting stuff. There's just a lot going on right now in terms of all the things that are happening in Azure. And I think that's it. I think that's the main things that I took away. Uh, ooh, nah, no, there is one more hidden away in a session done uh, via the Synapse guys. Um, we had Mike Reese talking a, in detail about some of, of the .NET for Spark stuff. And then right at the end of that talk, they went, and by the way, .NET for Spark is now version one. It has reached a, that milestone of going, we're now a feature complete language. We have our first full release. So .NET for Spark is now V1. And that's not mentioned in any of the announcements. It's not mentioned as any formal feature. The guys kind of uh, just snuck it in and went, by the way, .NET for Spark's gone, gone V1. So great news and congrats to all the team on that because that is an awesome achievement to get to that point. Um, so yeah, that's another thing. If you were think looking at um, C Sharp in Spark and going, it's a bit new. Oh, is, is, it, is it finished yet? Well, now it is. It has now reached V1, and so you can use it in Anger. Um, currently, it's only available natively through Synapse. You can use it through the open source um, Spark service. If you're building your own Spark cluster, you can uh, install the C-Sharp library and use it from there. It's not available in Databricks yet. So if you're in Databricks, you can't use C-Sharp, but you can use R. If you're in Synapse, you cannot use R, but you can use C-Sharp. So, eh. It's up to you and depends what kind of thing you like. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of things going on. Again, Photon for me is the big one, so I cannot wait until I can get my hands on that, and then I'll be doing lots of, this is what it's like with the Photon Engine videos, which I'm assuming will be, well, this code hasn't changed, but look how much faster it goes. And if that's the case, then great. Uh, but I do want to look into those different things. What if I write a Python UDF now? What if I write an R UDF now? Does that have the same performance impact it used to? And what's that going to change in terms of our performance patterns? Going to be super interesting. And then, yes, looking at Synapse and Power BI and saying, hey, look, how does this speed stuff up? How much control do we have over those materialized views? And from the sound of it, that could be based on hyperspace, which we did a video back. And it's all that kind of non-clustered style indexing. And if it's using that same library, that's baking hyperspace more in, making it more of an accelerator feature that is part of Synapse. And that's really cool. So don't forget, like and subscribe if that is useful for you. Let us know in the comments what, which feature do you think is actually the game changer? What things do you think? What were you expecting to hear, but you didn't hear? So I had a few people going, oh, is this, is this sign up going live? And there's been silence on the world of the sign, sign up team. We are not seeing sign up GA in Ignite today. So if you were expecting that, I'm sorry, it's not. Um, and I don't know when that's going to be announced, but mm, we'll see. And yeah, no, let us know what you think. All right, we'll catch you next time. Cheers.